espresso. It seems to be showing up everywhere these days. The explosion of specialty coffee is sweeping America with an unprecedented rate of growth. For the next 30 to 40 minutes, we will explore this phenomenon from its 100-year European heritage to its present explosive global growth and popularity. Americans drink in excess of 440 million cups of coffee each day. Coffee drinkers are fast becoming very highly sophisticated. They're demanding their coffee to be good and are expecting a bit of charisma along with the cup. Specialty coffee is part of the natural progression of Americans developing their palates. First came ethnic foods in the 60s and 70s, followed by interest in fine bottled wines, and now quality is expected in the coffee we drink. People across the country are getting excited about the profit potential and opportunities that are available in the specialty coffee business. For the young entrepreneur or established worker worried about job security and dissatisfied with his present job, specialty coffee offers high margins with relatively low startup costs. This is the reason the coffee business is so attractive to so many. The dream of owning one's own business is more accessible than ever. Let's explore together information which may help you decide if a future in the specialty coffee business is right for you. Let's try to better understand this product, the industry, and what exactly the phenomenon and drink is we call espresso. What exactly is espresso? And by the way, it's pronounced espresso, not expresso. Nothing will give you away faster to the sophisticated coffee aficionado than this common mispronunciation. Espresso, by definition, means fast coffee, but a more accurate description would be coffee, individually prepared, one cup at a time. Espresso is a process by which the most favorable and aromatic characteristics of finely ground, hard-packed coffee are extracted into a concentrated beverage. This is accomplished with the use of a specialized machine that produces significant pressure and temperature. This process removes the essence of the coffee while leaving the less desirable elements behind. What else is this drink, and what else does this term refer to? The term espresso is a bit confusing. It can mean four different things. It can mean a level of roast, it can mean a blend, it can mean a beverage, or it can mean a level of grind. When a person goes out uh, to an espresso bar or to a coffee cafe to order an espresso, uh, you can oftentimes tell if they're new to the, uh, to the uh, uh, industry or if they're new to the beverage. They'll walk up and they're, what they actually want is a latte, but they uh, instead order an espresso. And oftentimes they're quite disappointed when they're served a properly brewed fresh espresso. But espresso in itself is a, a wonderful drink. It's a very powerful drink. But to me, it's the brewing of the drink that is espresso. And many times people will take espresso, they'll add milk, they'll add the steamed milk, they'll add the frothed milk, they'll add a dollop of the frothed milk, but at the same time it's, it's a wonderful strong cup of coffee, a, a strong brew that has a history behind it. So to me espresso is the romance, it's the, it's the story. What we're all able to experience today in America, which is a vast array of drinks that we can choose from, is, is very nice because that gives a, a, an option to, to whomever to be able to choose what they like within the espresso menu. However, what we cannot forget and what is of most importance is that all of those drinks, excluding none of them, are made with a foundation of espresso and a, a foundation of milk steaming. If you take those two factors, and you look at espresso, you have to understand within that word espresso and making that espresso at its best, cup after cup consistently, there is a traditional way of doing things that cannot be distorted. And that traditional way of doing things is detail on top of detail on top of detail that is processed within a period of 25 seconds. And within those 25 seconds, there may be 50 details and 50 ways that are traditional ways of operating within a matter of producing that espresso that no one should be able to deviate from if you're having in mind that your end result of a product should be always at its best consistently. And the same with steaming. There's a traditional way of steaming, of handling that milk, 
a traditional way of giving texture, body, complexity, character, and taste to that milk that cannot be deviated from. Once you are able to operate within the standards of the traditional Italian espresso brewing quote-unquote techniques and the traditional Italian steaming techniques and put the two of them together as a foundation from all the other drinks that you were dealing with, then you can say, fantastic, now we can have the best of both worlds. This is an American money, no Italian money. It's better than that. <laughs> the Italian lire. <laughs> yes? No, the American is right. See, look. This is the way you do uh, uh, cappuccino in Italy. See the nice uh, creamy form. See? Absolutely never dry. Nice and creamy. And see the crema, the crema of the cafe, and the, cre and, the, and, the, and the foamy, nice foamy milk. National fast food chains, grocery stores, and convenience stores are all sporting signs in the Northwest. Espresso sold here. But even more surprising, espresso is found in dry cleaners, car washes, hair salons, video stores, hardware stores, and more. Finding gourmet coffee in these non-traditional spots leaves little doubt to the popularity of this beverage. Well, the reason it's special is because um, in Seattle we have a lot of damp, cold weather. We don't have much sun, so coffee keeps us up. And also the coffee here is very good. I just like it. Yeah. No, I, no, yeah, well, I need the fix, but I drink a lot of decaf. I just like the taste. Uh, well, I used to drink coffee to keep me awake, but um, now I like, I'd rather pay $2.50 for a really good latte, and it can't be, um, it can't be like a fa at a fast food place. Uh, yeah, I like latte a lot, and cafe mocha, and it's just once a day and works me up the rest of the day, and that's it. I go to school on the East Coast, and they don't have a lot of coffee out there, like they do here, and I miss it. I'm addicted. <laughs> coffee, just, I like the taste of it. I like just what it, not just the high you get from it, just the smell, the aroma, and it's just a good thing. What about the romance of coffee? The romance of coffee. I mean, you know, well, she I is pregnant, coffee. so there is romance involved here somewhere. <laughs> I think the, the whole idea about coffee um, is, is very romantic. I mean, you know, you wake up in the morning, you smell it, you put it on, and um, you put it out, and you invite people over for coffee and things like that. And um, once you've um, gotten to the point where you're ready to take the sip, I love that part. It's a big social thing. It's just an excuse to get together, you know. It, 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 it creates conversation, it creates friendships, I'm sure, and it... it Invite people over for coffee? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you wouldn't do a lot of things if you weren't going to go for coffee. I mean, it's an excuse to go do something. You're going to have someone over for, you know, juice or, you know, something like that. That doesn't work. <laughs> There's a lot that's healthy about coffee. It represents um, a new kind of culture, uh, a chance for people to get together in cafes, the European cafe culture, which is now coming into this country. A very attractive thing, very constructive for community. Coffee in Europe is something that's always been associated with art um, and style. So it brings that into the picture as well. And it certainly beats alcohol. Instead of gathering in bars, people can gather in, in cafes. And instead of getting drunk, they can have coffee, which lifts. When I first started selling coffee years ago, the coffee was a pretty standard measure of two and a half gallons per pound, or about 50 cups out of a pound, 55 cups out of a pound of coffee. And that was pretty good, heavy coffee. Then it got to where they were putting three gallons and four gallons and five gallons in, and you were serving dirty water was no longer coffee. And you remember a lot of the coffee shops that serve that kind of stuff. They call it the bottomless cup. But when the, when the espresso thing came back in, 
and these shops started opening up and serving a heavy coffee again, people got used to it and they liked the idea of having a nice full bodied cup of coffee. I think the reason that uh, specialty coffee is uh, having a rejuvenation or a renewal, if you will, is that uh, you're seeing in, the, in North America at least, and pretty much around the world, I think, uh, everybody is elevating their level of, of the quality of the food they drink, the automobiles they drive, the housing they live in. Uh, and I think it just goes along with our concept of, of better products. Well, I used to drink coffee maybe once or twice a day, basically espressos. I am a coffee, how you say that? When coffee somebody... colic. <laughs> coffee colic, that's right, I am. In Baltimore, we have more coffee bars. They tend to be opening in, um, you know, existing little shops and areas in the downtown area and um, are um, Becoming popular places for people to meet, particularly young people. They, they're beginning to date at uh, coffee bars. I like the I like the espresso because of the little rush it gets you get. And part of it is a trendsetter. I think everybody's drinking espresso. Um, and I do at least one a day, besides having a cup of coffee. Espresso coffee is the in thing to drink. <laughs> Seattle took a beverage that was once only found in Italian restaurants and introduced it effectively to the mass market. With over 500 espresso carts generating more than $4.3 million in annual revenues, Seattle has become the espresso capital of the United States. But where did this beverage come from? Let's explore its heritage and its subsequent development in this country. The cultural aspect in Italy of espresso drinking is, is very, uh, very deep and very embedded into every individual that wakes up in the morning first thing in Italy to begin with. Uh, it starts with waking up in the morning and smelling the aroma of cafe built, being uh, uh, brewed over a stovetop in, uh, in a household, in all households. And then from there, uh, most Italians are not really functioning yet until they have the first sip of cafe, which is a lighter version of espresso made in a stovetop. Once you get that first invigorating uh, feeling of, of uh, cafe in your, in, in, your, in, your, in your taste buds and in your mind and in, your, in everything that fulfills you, then you are ready to go down to the espresso bar. And there are thousands of espresso bars in most Italian cities. And uh, they're all over. They're, they're, they're a place where you go down and and uh, you meet friends, a place where you go and have an espresso if, uh, if that's what you like, or, or a cappuccino, and it's, it stops right there. Uh, you don't uh, have a chance of finding uh, tolls, uh, doubles, singles, syrups. So it's more than a place that you try to go and get in exchange for a monetary transaction. It's more than supply and demand. It's more than an exchange of products and money. What it really is, it becomes a cultural and social experience among friends that have met there, not for one day, not for two days, not for a week, maybe for years. And they've met there to enjoy talking about politics, to enjoy talking about uh, whatever it is that their families have just done the day before. Uh, and in, enjoy talking about those, uh, those topics, especially over a cup of espresso and cappuccino. Uh, it wouldn't be the same enjoyable talk if it wasn't happening in that particular espresso bar over that particular cup of cappuccino and espresso they've enjoyed there with their friends for years and years and years. The espresso thing in the North Beach area, you had John Giotta, you had Roma Cafe, you had Pete over in Berkeley, and Enrico's down in the corner of Broadway and uh, Columbus, but these people and these ethnic neighborhoods were serving espresso and once in a while a cappuccino. But they never, you never heard of them serving a flavored drink. Most of them would throw you out if you even suggested it. But that's why the espresso business, as we know it originally before t the search came into it, was a relatively small business around ethnic neighborhoods. And I remember before even Cafe LA magazine got started in, in in the late 1980s, that um, in 1987, when there were 13 espresso carts on the streets of Seattle, that the market here had saturated. 
and and then again when there were 200 carts and then when there were 400 carts and then when it was going into McDonald's and Denny's and 7-Eleven and every gas station had espresso and and um, I think what's tapped here with with specialty coffee is something that we've always taken to be kind of our leisure time experience you know people take a coffee break and it's not about the coffee, it's about the break. Just here in the Puget Sound, we have, uh, um, from Everett down to Olympia, we have uh, over 2,000 coffee serving establishments. Uh, again, that ranges from carts to espresso bars to restaurants that have espresso as well as uh, coffee houses. Uh, there's one fellow up the block from where we're standing here, and there's so much competition in the area that he's got a He's got a, a series of signs, and the one sign says, last espresso, dot, 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 and the next sign says, for the next 50 feet. And uh, it's literally true that uh, it's, it's tremendously uh, saturated, but people think that there's still room to grow, even in this city. From Seattle, the espresso craze has exploded south to Oregon and is now developing in California, Colorado, Idaho, Utah, Nevada, New Mexico, and Arizona. And it is now moving east. Why are so many people interested in this business? What do they find attractive about operating a coffee business? This is an interesting business. It seems like it's a good, clean business. Um, there's uh, good people that come in, um, pleasant atmosphere. What do I enjoy about the coffee business? I enjoy the variety of people I have an opportunity to meet. I enjoy serving the public. I enjoy the information and the resources I learn from exchanging with the people. Uh, we don't just give people flavor. The different people, different cultures that we run into here in Pioneer Square give us a flavor. Well, um, I think that um, it's very types of people that drink espresso. Uh, business people, uh, everyday people that walk up and down the street that prefer coffee. Uh, it's a real good business, I think, to personally be involved in because I get to meet a lot of people. Um, and it's a business that I, I would like to do for myself one day. The length of time I've been here is seven years, and uh, the industry in the last seven years is mostly made up of regular customers. This is the financial area, so I'm pretty much dependent on the building occupants. So, uh, and then I will say in the last seven years, uh, there hasn't been a morning that I haven't not want to come to work because of my clientele. Everybody's more like friends. Espresso street cart vending is the biggest food and beverage trend to happen in this country since fast food. Let's hear what some industry professionals and experts in the field have to say about this business opportunity of the 90s. Why it's so attractive? As a business, it's rather easy financially to get into. It does take a lot of work. And there is a lot more to launching a specialty coffee business, even a small one, a coffee card or a, a storefront, a small storefront, than meets the eye. And there is a lot uh, that one has to do to go into business and a lot of work that one has to do. At the same time, it's an opportunity that is remarkably accessible to a lot of people financially. And if you're willing to work hard, you really can, can make a go out of it. People like coffee. People like hearing about coffee, talking about coffee, drinking coffee. It's not like going into the petroleum business. And coffee is one of the most traded commodities in the world, second or third after petroleum. It's a very big field. It's rather untapped. And people just love it. Why do I think so many people are getting into this business? Because it's a new, refreshing way of uh, of making your making your fortune and being the being in business for yourself, I think uh, people are have worked for corporations. I think that they are seeing that there's absolutely no more job security with major corporations. Major corporations. Uh, I read in the in the Oregonian this morning that 50 percent of the people between 51 and 65 feel it's just as likely that they will be laid off as be able to keep their jobs until retirement. And that is a horrifying statistic today in America. 
So people have lost faith in major corporations. Uh, they can't trust them anymore, so they say, what are we going to do? You know, Ma, what are we going to do with our money? Uh, let's do something interesting. Let's have some fun. We've always liked coffee. Let's look into this new Northwest coffee phenomenon. Many people today who have existing businesses, they're successful, they're growing, are looking to specialty coffee as a means to diversify, as a means to strengthen their position in their, in their current business. There are very, very few things that you can add to an ongoing business that are going to develop foot traffic and develop customer loyalty as specialty coffee will. The, the, the appeal of specialty coffee, the appeal of freshly brewed espresso, the appeal of a great latte is transcending all demographic boundaries. It transcends age, it transcends race, it transcends income. You, you'll walk up to an espresso bar or you'll drive by a, a drive up espresso window and you'll see a, a, an upper end luxury car and right behind it you'll see a, a, a trade vehicle, somebody with, with some ladders on the top. One of the great pluses of owning an espresso cart is the mobility, is the freedom, is the flexibility that you have in finding a great location. There are more great locations in most cities in this country than any number of entrepreneurs can fill. Okay. Well, getting into the business is something that shouldn't be taken lightly. Somebody should really look into it. It's a business. It's uh, something that you should make sure that you, quote unquote, are qualified for. Um, do you enjoy people? Because it's a people-oriented business. It's one of the reasons I got involved. If you're only in it for the money, it's not really the business for you. Um, if you get in it for the people, you make a lot of money. A recent survey of espresso bar operations in the Pacific Northwest revealed this estimated product mix for espresso beverages sold. This survey only examined espresso beverages and did not take into consideration other items which are commonly sold from espresso bars, such as brewed coffee, baked goods, candies, and Italian sodas. As you can see, the straight shot of espresso accounted for only 3% of beverages ordered. Americanos, a gourmet version of brewed coffee made from the espresso machine, accounted for 12%. Cappuccinos accounted for 14%. Lattes, flavored lattes, and mochas are by far the most popular beverages, accounting for a combined total of 71% of all beverages sold. From this estimated product mix, an average of espresso bar menu prices, a typical beverage price per customer, was calculated at $1.90. Once again, this customer average does not include the extra income that can be realized by additional items typically sold at coffee bars. We multiplied this average price per beverage sold to illustrate the gross income potential of various coffee bar operations. A fair to average location, after developing a clientele, may average 100 plus cups a day, equaling annual sales of $68,000 or greater. A good location, generating sales of 250 beverages a day, should realize a gross income of $170,000 a year or more from specialty coffee sales. An excellent location, serving 500 cups a day or more, should easily see gross sales in excess of $340,000. To determine your net income, you will of course need to do careful research in order to be able to analyze all potential expenses. Some of the factors which should be considered are rent, cost of goods sold, employee wages, and taxes, payment on equipment loans or leases if not purchased outright, licenses, insurance, utilities, and outside services such as bookkeeping and laundry services. You know, I've been asked often if espresso is the business of the 90s. And I certainly believe it's the growth business of the 90s. I think there's no question. It's very inflation proof. People can turn to coffee when they can't do a movie or they can't go out to a fine dinner. They can go out and have a nice dessert coffee and it can still be a very special experience. I went, however, to think of it as being the business of the 90s because um, I suppose because myself as well as many other people have uh, kind of bet money on, on the fact that coffee is not a fad but that it is in fact a trend. Th there's an incredible amount of room for growth and it's growing now. We see it happening in Manhattan. We see it happening in Washington DC. We see it happening you know, in Florida and Georgia and 
Illinois and certainly California and, and still in the whole West Coast. Furthermore, it's also growing beyond our shores. We're getting a lot of calls now from Australia and New Zealand. We see a real interest in Japan and Korea and all, all around the Pacific Rim. There's something happening here that certainly makes it the industry of the 90s, but I'm not sure it stops there. Like any business, specialty coffee requires the knowledge, expertise, resources, and dedication to realize success. Let's gain an understanding of what it takes to open, operate, and succeed in the espresso business. There's two things that are important um, to sell from a cart. First of all, um, the coffee has to be great, and, and you have to have very well-trained baristas. And secondly, you have to have a terrific barista with great personality working behind the cart. Because it's, this is like their house, and people are, are stopping by. You expect to be greeted and, and have people say hi to you, and, and it's the whole facade of how you present yourself on the cart. It's a lot of fun. Okay. Uh, we have found that our customer base has increased when the quality of the drink increased. When we first started, we had more nerve than we had knowledge. And we were able to acquire some really good trainers. And it made a difference. And when the quality of the drinks improved, we increased our customer base. And it really increased the volumes of sales considerably over the last, say, four years. When we started out, we were doing how much, Keen? About, about 200 drinks a day. About 200 drinks a day. And now we're doing over 1,000 drinks a day. And it's due largely to the quality of the drink and to the quality of the person serving the drink. We're doing what we can on our end to, to try and help people understand really what drives this industry, and that's quality. Uh, that's what's going to make you successful, offering a, a better drink than the guy down the street. That's what's going to get you the loyal customers. It's by offering the best, the best product and best finished drink that you can. It is as important as people told them to learn the industry, to learn coffee, because they have to know um, why their product is not being accepted. For example, if business starts, fa starts fading a little bit because the, the consumer chooses a better product down the street, the person that doesn't know coffee, that doesn't know the industry, may not even know how to fix the problem. And so I think what's going to happen is basically you're going to see, you know, still more success. You're still going to see a, a lot of good times. But there's going to be a, a situation where people are going to really find out why people were telling them why they should know the industry before they got into it and why they should know coffee. And know some, a lot more of the subtleties are going to become important because quality is going to become much more important in how consumers choose the product. So there are a lot of challenges in this industry. Um, a lot of people get really excited about this business. And, and believe me, rightly so, because I've had the best time in it. The people I've met and the things I've gotten to do I wouldn't have been able to do, and I've been enjoying it immensely. Um, people see that in me and in others that are having the best time in their life, and they also see that it's a, it is a cash business. And I think they're prompted more by, I guess, a quick buck attitude. They got salespeople out there that um, are out there, obviously, to make a living, but they're out there saying, "Yeah, you get this equipment, and boom, you're in business, and you're making fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year." In a lot of cases, that can be true, and it's exciting when it does, but it is a business that takes a lot of work. Um, you want to make sure that you're very people-oriented because that's going to bring you the cash. I started off in the business knowing nothing. I did about six months of research, which is what I suggest people to do before they get in. It's a decision well made if you can make it after six months of going through the pain. Well, you've got to remember that the gourmet coffee business is just like any other business. If you're not capitalized properly, you're going to fail no matter what it is, whether you try to start a Federal Express or you try to start a tavern or whatever it is. If you don't have enough money to operate the business while you're getting the business, you're going to fail. It's just that simple. And uh, I think people look at a cart and say, gee, that doesn't cost very much money, 15000 bucks. I could buy a cart and a machine and, and go out and negotiate a lease and I can be in business. But they have to realize that unless they're in a community where everybody knows what their product is and is dying to get their product, it's going to be a while. If, if someone is properly capitalized, has a passion for coffee, uh, develops a good location, develops good sources for their, not only their coffee, but their equipment that they use and the ancillary products they're going to sell, that they will sell it there on their cart or in their shop, the chances are 100 percent that they will succeed and make money and be very happy in their work. Uh, it all has to be, it all has to work together. 
Location, location, location. Location, location, and location. If, if there's one thing I tell everybody is, is put all of your emphasis on location. Do as many studies as you can. Get the best if one location is going to cost you more for rent, uh, pay it if it's, if it's better because, boy, you can, uh, volume makes up for a lot of mistakes. <laughs> Well, the main question is uh, the location and the quality of the product and the image that they try to promote in this business. Uh, quality of the product, I think that is the most important part of the business. Uh, providing a good service is very important and the image, the presentation of your business is absolutely number one. I don't think you should ever forget how much hard work it takes and how many hours you have to put in. It's not one of those situations where you can just leave it to a manager and check in every two or three days. Um, the coffee business is a personal business. People like to see the owner there and they also like to feel that personal touch. times have you found yourself envious of someone else's success and said to yourself, I could have done that? Well, as we've all learned, everything in life is timing. Great opportunities don't come along often anymore for the individual, allowing them the creation of their own business. Opportunity is now at hand in specialty coffee in most areas of the United States. Those who establish their business early enough will find the best locations and realize the greatest profit potential. Just how much opportunity still exists and what is the projected rate of growth? We have some customers in Moab, Utah that are really great and so all the little places are getting espresso. But the big areas are really growing. New York is just uh, calling constantly on the phone. And uh, we've shipped everywhere I think but North Dakota and Mississippi. So it really is a national trend and a lot of times when you talk to people outside the area they're very concerned if another espresso bar is opening in town and we try to allay their fears by uh, letting them know a little bit of the density that we have in Seattle and that you know it really a, a town really can support more than one espresso bar. Until we get to the point that Europe is where uh, in America where every place that we have a drip coffee brewer if uh, if we can get an espresso machine beside it and I, I don't think that's gonna really happen in my lifetime maybe my kids lifetime but uh, I think we're, we're really just scratching the surface at this point. Coffee, as you know, has been uh, consumed by a large percentage of the population for a long time. And a large percentage of the population still consumes coffee. The question is, how many of those people would be interested in specialty coffee? And I think n nearly every one of those. And if we're maybe saturated into that market about 3 to 5%, that the growth could be 20-fold over the next 10 years. We have, uh, we have five parts in the area. They're all located within, between Everett, within about a 50-mile span. We have um, one at the Seattle Federal Credit Union here, one uptown at Seattle Telco. We have them at Boeing Credit Unions, and we will be going into the Tour Center in, um, in Boeing, where they have the 747s and the 777s up there, so that we can accommodate people that come from all over the world that want to try good espresso drinks. We also have just opened up in, in Oakland, New Zealand, which is a, a pilot project for us. Um, the purpose of our carts is to give back to the community on some level. We're a woman-owned business, woman-owned corporation, and, and I'm the owner, and I also work all the carts as well so that I get a good feel for what's happening on all the street corners. Uh, in lieu of paying rent or paying lease space for this area, we give 10% of the gross off of this cart to the credit union to a mutually agreed upon charity. We really offer our customers the atmosphere of the barista to be able to talk to them uh, about anything. Uh, listen to their problems. We're like a bartender. I'm a part-time psychologist, I guess. I should put a sign out here saying, five cents, I'm in. The reason why you should buy a cup of coffee from me is because I try hard. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the truth. Beans and the barista. I think it's the most important thing to, to uh, stay on top of the competition. And then, 
a little something I have and nobody has is the accent. <laughs> it's more Italian, so. I own a coffee stand called Cup of Java. It's called Cup of Java. It's located in Everett, Washington. And it's done real well for me. I've owned it for about two years. We get to know the regular customers because they come through every single day. Sometimes twice a day, three times a day. Yeah, so you so, get to see the same people over and over again. And it's a friendly business. Probably the most interesting part of working in, as a barista is the fact that we get to come in contact with a lot of people. And um, sometimes we end up uh, being probably the most familiar face that they have or the most uh, refreshing face that they have during their day, especially in this area. People are commuting downtown and we're kind of setting the, the pace for them because of, because of the enjoyment of not only receiving an espresso, but the fact that it's, it's a pretty nice environment in here. What you can do with a mobile espresso is go to different places and that's the beauty of it. You can travel on your wheels and go to several places in a day. Special events, those are probably the most fun. The amount of people that come, you just can't even prepare for it. We went there at 8.30 in the morning, we were supposed to open up at 10 o'clock, and they were knocking on the door as soon as we got there. Um, of course, we had to wait a couple minutes to get the generator running. It only takes about 15 minutes to warm up, and we were slammed for the whole day. From about 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock in the afternoon, I had a line all the time, continuously of about 20 people. And, um, it's a lot of money. I, I love the fact that it's an all-cash business. Um, it was great, and it's very lucrative. Well, we get people from traveling from all over the United States, and they, they're so excited to come to Seattle for their first latte experience that they study on the latte lingo. And it turns out that when they arrive here, they start teaching us baristas new, new lingo, like, uh, could I have my latte on a leash? And it's like, oh, what's that? I haven't heard that one. Oh, that means to go. Don't you know that? And I, oh. <laughs> so we, we can get all sorts of new, new expressions here. And, and uh, they come up and study the lingo sheet to decide what kind of coffee they would like to have. And so I, I from my location in Seattle, I get a lot of what I call virgin latte drinkers. And so when they leave, I say, be sure and tell everybody you lost it in latte da. <laughs> Now you've had an exposure to the opportunities and the potential that exist in the most exciting growth industry of the decade. As you've heard time and time again in this tape, it is seldom that a business that possesses this income potential is accessible to the average person. We hope this video has been helpful and informative. Only you can decide if a future in the specialty coffee business is right for you. If this business is what you're looking for, what's your next step? It is vitally important that you get good information explore with intent the potential and possibilities in your particular market. You will need to find the coffee companies and equipment dealers that possess a partnership philosophy and are dedicated to helping you on your road to success and not just interested in closing a sale. You will need most importantly to find every source of information possible, allowing you to make the best possible decision. A list of valuable educational resources will be provided at the end of this video. and it's milk, beans, and water a whole bunch of different ways. And you gotta love it, because uh, it's caffeine.
Bellissimo proudly presents Coffee Universe, the final frontier in coffee industry websites. www.coffeeuniverse.com is the definitive specialty coffee website. The new Espresso 101. This award-winning one-hour video has been totally reshot and digitally re-edited for the next millennium. Already the definitive industry video training tool, the new Espresso 101, contains more detailed information and has been expanded to include the fundamentals of proper drip coffee preparation. This video tool will reduce training time by up to 70 percent, while in most cases providing a more thoroughly trained employee than if trained by conventional methods. In this informative video, the viewer will learn about a brief history of coffee, understanding the coffee bean from seed to export, the roasting and blending of coffee, espresso equipment, extracting perfect espresso, the fine art of steaming and foaming milk, preparing espresso bar beverages, fundamentals of drip coffee preparation, and finally, equipment maintenance, cleaning, and safety. Each video package includes a study guide, multiple choice test with answer key, and a barista diploma. Espresso 101 has been endorsed by the Specialty Coffee Association of America, as well as many of the specialty coffee industry's top professionals. Bean Business Basics, the definitive how-to business manual for the specialty coffee business. This 650-page encyclopedia provides detailed information about virtually every aspect of the product, business startup, and ongoing operations. Bean Business Basics will lead the reader down a path to success while helping them avoid the potholes of costly or fatal business mistakes. The authors possess 40 years of combined retail and food service experience, including knowledge gained from owning their own successful specialty coffee operations and by helping hundreds of consulting clients off to successful starts. This 39-chapter manual includes such information as evaluating coffees through cupping, selecting a coffee roaster, proper brewing principles, determining a concept by your financial resources, selecting the right location, strategies of negotiating a lease, planning your menu, design of your coffee bar, bureaucracies and red tape, purchasing equipment, hiring and managing employees, establishing budgets and cost controls, marketing your business, achieving profitability, and much, much more. Bean Business Basics include sample menus, store designs, and a full set of ready-to-use operational forms. Bean Business Basics is another quality product created by Bellissimo and has been endorsed by the Specialty Coffee Association of America. Sip Art. Bellissimo now offers three volumes of coffee-specific clip art for your computer. Volumes 1 through 3 contain 90-plus original images. Save thousands in designer fees and add pizzazz to your menus, flyers, advertising, website, or point-of-sale marketing. New from Bellissimo Sip Art Countries of Origin. This new computer clip art program features over 50 artistic representations of the major producing nations of the world. Ideal for bulk bean bags and bins, the images from countries of origin will create a mystique and appeal, boosting your bulk bean sales. Now you can have the same marketing punch of the big boys with countries of origin. All SIP art is available for both PC and Macintosh platforms. SIP art images consist of files that are compatible with nearly all word processing, draw, and paint programs. Bellissimo offers a wide variety of books from some of the most highly respected authors in the world of coffee. Contact Bellissimo for a full list of available titles. Bellissimo Consulting Services. Draw from a wealth of experience by using a company with many years of industry expertise. The consultants at Bellissimo possess over 40 years of hands-on experience in retail business, food service operations, and specialty coffee. They will maximize your chances of success by helping you make the right decisions. They can save you time and money by preventing costly mistakes. Bellissimo is a full-service consulting company, and their services include concept development, creating business plans, projecting financial performance, assisting in location analysis, 
coffee bar ergonomic design, equipment and vendor selection, employee hiring and training, management development, establishing operational systems, troubleshooting, and goal setting. For more information about consulting services or any of the aforementioned quality products, call Bellissimo or check out our website at www.espresso101.com. Well, I'm always happy to recommend Bellissimo because I'm really thrilled that there's an organization like that in the industry that's taking all of the necessary training information and encapsulating it into very understandable, exciting, and interesting formats as the tapes and the books that are very easy to understand and hopefully generate enthusiasm on the part of the people that are working in the industry. If, if education is important in wine and beer, it must be ten times as important in coffee. And certainly Bellissimo has done more than anybody I can think of uh, to, uh, is to promote a sort of responsible, uh, lively, but solidly grounded knowledge of, uh, of, of coffee. Well, bellissimo. Bellissimo in Italian means very beautiful. Uh, I have to say that that word applies absolutely perfectly to what Ed and Mark and Bruce and everyone in Bellissimo does. And I say that not, not as a cliche, but I say that with knowledge. Why? I know Bruce and I know Ed for a few years and I know what their vision is. Their vision goes beyond just making money, beyond just making a return on investment. They are academic people at heart. They are food people at heart. They are artistic people at heart. And they have an immense amount of creativity, an immense amount of knowledge, an immense amount of passion, not in making money, but in getting information in a beautiful way out to people that need it, like us. And getting information that can be used by the whole industry to bring what we're doing to the next level. It is absolutely important that we understand that the goal here is to educate and not to sell. And I appreciate them for what they are. And I think it's Bellissimo is an appropriate name for who they are as people and as a company. Because after all, it is people that make a company, and they make Bellissimo.